I thought I knew more than the average person about tea. After all, I'd been conditioned as a child to know that a surefire way to please my dad was to serve him a steaming hot cup of tea. In fact, my dad loved tea so much, I don't think I ever saw him drink water. He always had a mug somewhere in the house, even if it had gone cold. But it turns out, I didn't know as much as I thought. It is peaceful, delicate, soothing and calming. We see it as a universe. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Tea is a universe? Are you saying it's not just about dumping a bag into a mug? It turns out there's a lot more to this humble beverage than I first realised. The story of tea began more than 5,000 years ago in China, where according to legend, leaves from a nearby tree blew into Emperor Sheng Nung's cup of hot water. Mm. Mm. That was a gum nut. Ugh. It didn't take long for word to spread about the medicinal benefits of the leaves from the Camellia sinensis tree. It was just kind of seen as something that would keep you awake, um, that was very useful for Buddhism, to, for people who wanted to kind of stay awake and be alert for prayers. It was kind of attributed these qualities that were like the opposite of alcohol, like alertness, awakeness. Chinese tea has been developed into six main varieties, green, white, yellow, wulong, black, and dark tea. Correctly drinking tea really gives many benefit to our health life. Initially reserved for China's elites, tea evolved to become a drink for the masses. Around the time of the Ming Dynasty, the 17th century, there's this uh, transfer from these elaborate teas to the teas that we recognize today, loose leaf teas, which are plucked off the tree, roasted, rolled, etc., and they look like the teas we would buy today. Tea culture soon spread across the world before taking a dark turn thanks to those pesky colonists, the British. By the 18th century, 19th century, the English East India Company began to really uh, purchase large amounts of tea from China. Um, but they were trying to figure out a way to pay for it. So they eventually discovered that if they could take the opium that was grown on farms in their colony at this time, Eastern India, and brought that to China, then people in China would purchase the opium. They could use the profits from that to purchase the tea and bring it back to Europe and to the English market. Opium addiction had a strong grip on China until the Cultural Revolution. The British East India Company declares war on the grounds of defending free trade. But really it's about the profits from tea. They very swiftly win this military naval battle in 1842. Uh, and in Chinese history, this is seen as the beginning of the end of the last empire of China, the, the Qing Dynasty. Starting with the Opium War of 1842, this was a century of humiliation that was only ended with the Communist Revolution of 1949. Tea is the world's most consumed drink after water. So millions of people must be drinking it as I speak. But how many of them realise its complex history? And why didn't Dad teach me that tea was a universe? He didn't even teach me the proper Chinese way to serve it. Shane Shu is a certified tea master and an expert on the ritual of the Chinese tea ceremony. He says the first step is to appreciate the tea by examining the leaves and smelling the aroma. So it smells like a green tea to me, but is it technically a green tea? Technically, actually it's oolong, oolong it's oolong. tea. Okay. Yeah. I failed the tea master test already. <laughs> the wrong type of tea. The first round of hot water is for rinsing and warming the cups. You then shake the leaves to loosen them, appreciate the tea again, then add another round of hot water to rinse and wake up the flavour. Wake up. Wake up the tea. Shane doesn't need a clock to measure the steeping time because he does it with his breath. Five breaths later, it's ready to serve. So enjoy. All right, cheers. Cheers. Mm, it has really good flavour. Like, it's very clear, but it's a very nice, it's strong enough. The significance of tea ceremony is getting people together for peace. When people come together for tea ceremony, they're not just drinking tea, but also exchanging and learn knowledge through the conversation and the debate. Tea ceremonies are also a significant ritual at Chinese weddings, called Jing Cha, meaning respectfully offering tea. It symbolises the union of the bride and groom's families. The new couples will be uh, serving the tea to their parents to thanks, giving their life, their best wishes for them. 
But Shane says you don't have to wait for a special occasion. Drinking tea every day is a ceremony in itself. Now that I know more about the customs around tea, I feel like I should treat my daily ritual with a bit more respect. You are kind. You are good. You are one with the universe. Have a wonderful day.